Who's there? Joe. Joe who? Joe mama. Oh. What's up? And today I'm back with another Warriors ranking. Now today we're going to be ranking the Omen of the Stars books. Now I honestly would say that this series was one of the worst, but at the same time it has one of my favorite books. So it's kind of confusing because you know, I, overall I don't really like this series that much, but I want to like it a lot because it has one of my favorite books. But anyway guys, remember to leave your ranking of the Omen of the Stars books down in the comments below. Also remember, we're trying to get to 100 subs by 2022, so make sure to hit that subscribe button, and let's get started. In last place, we have Fading Echoes, and this book is another case of the I can't really remember it, you know? The Warriors books that I can't remember the most was like the very end of The Power of Three, and then the very beginning of The Omen of the Stars. Like, that kind of area was just very fuzzy for me, okay? Now, the one thing that did happen in this book, really, was that the big tree fell over ThunderClan, and that killed Longtail and also injured Briarlight a lot, okay? And that was something that was kind of important throughout the next few books or so. Also, I'm pretty sure you had Ivypaw kind of, like, drifting into the Dark Forest and stuff, and you had some stuff with the Dark Forest here, so they were, there was that. But really, I don't remember this book that too much. I don't think really anything too important happened here. And it's kind of sad if the biggest thing that happened in your book was a tree falling. Uh, so yeah. In fifth place, we have Night Whispers. Uh, I think this one is about as good as Fading Echoes, but probably slightly better. Because, of course, you had Flame Tail's death at the end of this one. He was drowning and stuff. And then you had Jay Feather trying to save him and stuff. And... Um, yeah, that was pretty sad and also a pretty big part of the series, I guess. But other than that, this is again one that I can't remember all that much. So I think before that, it wasn't all that great, you know? I think the end was pretty good, so that probably puts it above the second one, right? But when I read uh, this book, this was actually the last Warriors book I read for a while. And I think this is actually the case with a lot of people. Uh, around this time in the series is people started to not like it as much. You know, they started to drift away. And I can understand why, because around this time, uh, the books were starting to get not that good, you know? But I do think they picked up, but um, yeah, first of all, not much happened in this one. And then also, this was the last one that I read for a while, which probably means that it wasn't all that good. In fourth place, we have, um, what do we have? <laughs> in fourth place, we have, funny enough, The Fourth Apprentice. Okay, I do remember this one a little bit more than the two that came after it, mainly because you had Dovepaw, and then you had the whole thing with, like, the lake was, like, drying up or something, and then they had to go and do something with some beavers, okay? So, I don't remember it completely, but it seems like there was something relatively large that was going on here, you know? Like, you had a whole journey and stuff, and there was beavers, you know, and the lake was driving up, and this is the first one in the series. You're, introdu you're introduced to Dovepaw and some of the other characters, and I just think overall this one is probably a little bit more stuff happened than uh, Fading Echoes and Night Whispers. And just overall I'd probably say it was a little bit better. Now one interesting thing with the series is that the first three books I don't really like that much. But the last three books I really really like. So it's just kind of confusing. But anyway, yeah, let's continue. In third place we have The Forgotten Warrior. This one and Sign of the Moon are very close for me. Like, I think they're pretty much equal, you know? But I do think Sign of the Moon is just a little bit better. Maybe it isn't, but I just have, like, some, some good memories with that one, I guess. But the biggest thing with the Forgotten Warrior is, of course, Holly Leaf, who is the Forgotten Warrior. And honestly, this was the book that got me to like her. I mean, I never really liked her that much in The Power of Three. But after reading this one, I really thought she was pretty cool. So I really like the stuff underground in this book with the caves and the tunnels and stuff. And I like the end of the book with the whole battle with Wind Clan, you know, that was pretty cool. And also the battle of the Dark Forest was definitely kind of looming closer and there was some stuff that went on with that. So it was definitely very cool to see Hollyleaf in this one. 
back and even better than before and the whole stuff with the underground tunnels and then of course wind clan there was a battle with them i think so yeah i think this one is really good uh i do like sign of the moon just a little bit more though but of course in second place we have sign of the moon now like i said the this one and the forgotten warrior they're literally tied for me okay like it's not like I like one more than the other, but I have more memories with this one, so I decided, you know, I probably should go with this one as being better. And like I mentioned earlier, with Night Whispers, I stopped reading Warriors for a while, for two reasons. One, we had Reading Olympics in my school that year. I think I was in fourth grade, maybe, I don't, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, we had Reading Olympics that year, and I was trying to read a bunch of books for that. And I couldn't really read Warriors and then all the books for Reading Olympics at the same time. So I chose to go with Reading Olympics. And then there's also the fact that I wasn't really liking Warriors as much anymore, you know? But then this was the book that got me kind of back into Warriors. And, you know, with that, I, I kind of have warm feelings for it, you know? Because it, you know, I could have stopped reading this series. Like, my favorite book series of all time. And I could have stopped, but this one made me continue. And I'm thankful, you know? But uh, the book itself, I'm not gonna say I remember everything, because I really don't. Um, but I do remember that, you know, you had Jay Feather, and he was doing something, like, in the past with, I think her name was, like, Rising Moon or something. I don't remember, really. There's some stuff with the Tribe of Rushing Water that I think I liked a lot. And even the stuff back at Thunder Clan, I remember finding entertaining. And to my memory, I really liked the last third of this book. Now, with all that said, I don't really remember everything that happened in here, you know? It's been a while since I've read it, right? Like, three or four years, I don't know, maybe more than that, right? But, um, I definitely remember liking this one a lot, and I've actually heard some people not like this one, like, say it's one of the worst, and I, I'm not with you, you know? I, I like this one a good bit, or at least I remember liking it a good bit. Anyway, before I get my top pick, remember to leave your ranking down in the comments below, and let's continue! In first place, though, of course, we have The Last Hope. Not only is this my favorite book of this series, but it is my second favorite Warriors book of all time. Like, this one is phenomenal, okay? It is absolutely phenomenal. Um, obviously, you have the Battle of the Dark Forest. And even before that, this book was amazing, okay? You had something with Jay Feather and Flame Tail and Star Clan that was really cool. And you just had a lot of great build up and tension and just so much cool stuff i really love the characters here you know you have a lot of great characters that were in this book of course but then the only reason this one really exists is the battle of the dark forest and here's the thing not only is it epic but they've been leading up to it for like three series right it was in the new prophecy okay it was in the power of three and it was in the omen of the stars and at the end of each of those series i was expecting that the battle was going to happen but it didn't and finally it did and it was spectacular some people say it wasn't quite as big as it should have been and maybe you're right but uh no <laughs> i just the battle was so epic you know it didn't have to be half of the book to be great okay it was just so cool um each character had their own little bit of uh stuff to do you know there was battles and like there was like little mini battles in each of the clans and of course there were some deaths as well that were very sad uh but also big as well firestar dies here as in like freaking firestar okay like the most important character in all of warriors and he died in this one um i really liked his death here and then he had holly leaf she died here that was probably the saddest one if i'm being honest and yeah there were some other characters too that died i can't remember all of them off the top of my head but yeah there's a lot of death uh, it was handled very well uh, amazing battle one of the best books of all time one of the best warriors books of all time i think it's phenomenal and it's definitely in first place but i almost forgot i have to look at the reddit poll to see what you guys thought so let's go ahead and look okay here we are in last place with two votes is fading echoes Tied in fourth place with four votes each is Night Whispers and Sign of the Moon. In third place with six votes is The Fourth Apprentice. And in second place with 14 votes is The Forgotten Warrior. And then of course in first place with 44 votes is The Last Hope. And uh, the top comment says, 
the last hope because Firestar dies. Um, I, I hope you die. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, he said JK. Well, still, still, that's offensive to my culture, okay? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'm really surprised that this one got 74 votes. Um, remember, guys, to vote on the next one, and your opinion will make it into the video. But anyway, guys, that concludes this Omen of the Stars ranking. My ranking on Dawn of the Clans should be coming out in the next week or two. I'm not really sure, but, you know, sometime soon, right? And, as always, make sure to get lost, hit the road, take a hike, and I will see you on the next video.